At flipsidegaming.com you can use the promo code LVD to get a 10% discount on orders over $10, including the exclusive Richard Kane Ferguson playmats featuring art such as the memorable Dacon Blackblade, so get yours today. Hello and welcome to another episode of Wacky Wednesday, a weekly series where we explore wacky deck ideas in both standard and modern, and this week we're taking a look at a blue-black standard deck built around the Antiquities War Saga from Dominaria. A 4 mana enchantment that when it enters the battlefield, we get to take a look at the top 5 cards of our library, reveal an artifact to put into our hand, and then on the second turn that the saga is in play we get to do the same, so take a look at the top 5 to search an artifact, and then on the third turn we get to turn all artifacts we control into 5-5 five, five creatures until end of turn to hopefully kill our opponent on the spot. So of course the deck is going to contain a lot of artifacts so we can find them with the Antiquities War and eventually turn them into creatures. And we have a lot of other artifact synergies going on as well. We've got Karn, Sign of Urza which works nicely with artifacts. We've got Desert which also synergizes with artifacts. And Herald of Anguish and the Improvised Mechanic cards that also work well with lots of artifacts in play. So let's take a look at the entire deck list, starting out with our 1-drops, where we have our first artifact, Renegade Map, a 1-mana artifact enters the battlefield tapped, and we can tap and sacrifice it to search up a basic land, so this helps us fix our mana, and this is also why we're only playing 21 lands, since 4 copies of Renegade Map kind of serve as additional lands, and also help us find more artifacts for the Antiquities War. Next up we have two copies of Fatal Push, which is a nice removal spell, and in this deck, more than in other decks, we can actually enable Revolt pretty often, thanks to cards like Renegade Map, cards like Cogworkers Puzzle Knot, which we'll get to in a second, so we can sacrifice permanence ourselves to help us kill creatures with converted mana cost 3 or 4, as opposed to just creatures with converted mana cost 1 and 2. Next up we have Cogworkers Puzzle Knot, a nice artifact that generates an additional artifact, since when the Puzzle Knot enters the battlefield we get to make a 1-1 servo creature token, that's also an artifact, and for 1 and a white we can sacrifice the Puzzle Knot to make an additional servo token, so this helps us put lots of artifacts in play, which is very useful when we're trying to kill with the Antiquities War, but also helps us with improvised cards like Herald of Anguish and Metallic Rebuke. Next up we have 4 copies of Prophetic Prism, which is a very useful artifact that replaces itself, so when it enters the battlefield we get to draw a card, and having an artifact in play is very useful for our improvised cards, and helps us enable Antiquities War as well. Then we have 4 copies of Servo Schematic, which is very similar to Cogworkers Puzzle Knot, a 2 mana artifact that when it enters the battlefield we get to make a 1-1 Servo Creature token, and when the Servo Schematic is put into the graveyard from the battlefield we get to make an additional 1-1 Servo Creature token. Then we have three copies of Treasure Map, which is a nice artifact that can provide some card selection, and then when it transforms into Treasure Cove we get those three treasure tokens, so it helps us put even more artifacts in play, and can also provide some card advantage. Then we have three copies of Metallic Rebuke to help us interact with the opponent, a three mana counterspell with Improvise, so as we cast the Metallic Rebuke we can tap any number of untapped artifacts to reduce the generic mana cost of the Metallic Rebuke, and then Metallic Rebuke itself counters target spell unless its controller pays 3 generic mana, so essentially a mana leak. Then we get to our powerful 4 drops in the deck, where we have 2 Planeswalkers and the Antiquities War Saga. We have 3 copies of Karn, Sign of Urza, which fits perfectly into this deck. The plus 1 and minus 1 modes can provide some Karn advantage, while the minus 2 can make a giant artifact which grows with the number of artifacts we have in play. Then of course the full 4 copies of the Antiquities War Saga, and then we have two copies of Tesseract the Schemer, which helps us make even more artifacts with this plus one mode. Minus two can be used as a removal spell, and the minus seven also turns artifacts into five fives, but this time around they stay five fives, so it's not just until end of turn. Next up we have four copies of Herald of Anguish, another great payoff card for playing all these artifacts, since it's a seven mana five five flyer with the improvised mechanic, so again we can tap down untapped artifacts we control as we cast a Herald, to help us pay for the generic mana cost, so the Herald can come down as early as turn 4, and at the beginning of our end step each opponent has to discard a card, so if they can't remove the Herald right away they will be discarding a card, and for 1 and a black we can sacrifice an artifact we control to give target creature minus 2 minus 2 until end of turn, so that's also a very nice synergy with the servo schematic, so that's a way for us to sacrifice the schematic to get an additional servo token. And then last but not least we have two copies of Walking Ballista, which is a nice early game card against aggressive decks as we get to take down one toughness creatures, and then in the late game it makes for a great mana sink. Then taking a look at our mana base, we have four copies of Fatted Pools, which we can also cycle for two mana, enters the battlefield tapped and counts as both an island and a swamp, which is very nice with Drowned Catacomb, which enters the battlefield untapped if we control an island or a swamp. 
then one copy of Inventor's Fair, which is also a nice one. If we control three artifacts at the beginning of our upkeep, we get to gain one life, and we can also pay for mana, tap the Inventor's Fair and sacrifice it to go look for an artifact in our deck and put it into our hand. So we can search up maybe a Walking Ballista if we need it as a late game finisher, can just search up additional artifacts to set up Antiquities War, or in sideboarded games, we can maybe even search up a Sorcerer Spyglass, and then a whole bunch of basic lands, five islands, five swamps, and also two copies of Spire of Industry, which together with Prophetic Prism can help us generate white mana as well to sacrifice the Conkworkers Puzzle Knot. Then quickly going over the sideboard, we have two additional copies of Fatal Push against aggressive decks, two Duresses against control decks, three copies of Contraband Kingpin, which also synergizes nicely in our deck and can shore up the ground against aggressive creature decks, two copies of Negate against the control decks, two copies of Sorcerer Spyglass, which is pretty versatile. Then we have two copies of Phyrexian Scriptures as another Saga, which acts as a sweeper effect that doesn't destroy our own artifacts. And then two copies of Battle at the Bridge as another removal spell that can also gain us some life against the more aggressive decks and can also help take care of indestructible creatures by giving minus X minus X. So that's the deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. All right, we're on the play and this hand's a little bit sketchy. Essentially only two lands and three four drops. It's a bit on the high side. We do get to play a Ballista on two, but yeah, don't think we can keep a two lander. So we'll go to six. All right, this is a bit better. Essentially a three lander, some artifacts to enable improvise. And I don't think we want another Herald. So turn one Renegade map. And up against a green-white deck. And all right, there's the Antiquities War. So I think we just run out the Prophetic Prism, hope to draw into a land. And then next turn go Treasure Map plus Cry in the same turn. And I think we played a Prism before sacking the Renegade map to increase the chances of drawing a land. Instead we drew a second Antiquities. So we're probably forced to sacrifice this Renegade map, but we can wait until our turn to see if we are gonna find a land or not. Since otherwise the map can be useful in enabling improvised cards. Opponent with Adventurous Impulse, finding Angel of Sanctions. So that's also a potential answer to the Antiquities War. Sun tap. All right, we found a Fetid Pools. It's not ideal. I think we still play it, and then we can still play the treasure map as well. And then next turn we get to sacrifice a Renegade map. Seems fine. And then we get to play our Antiquities, or we get to play Herald of Anguish if we draw an untapped source. Opponent off to a pretty slow start. All right, did not find a land, so I think we're forced to sacrifice the Renegade map here. Go get an island. We could have also opted to maybe scry with treasure map, keep up Metallic Rebuke, but I think it's just too powerful not to play the Antiquities War here and hopefully find an artifact. Ooh, we can even choose. Renegade map or service schematic. Schematic is pretty tempting with the Herald of Anguish we have in hand. So I'll take the schematic here. Say go. Definitely have a lot of options now. Can play a second Antiquities. Can play service schematic, leave up Metallic Rebuke and Scry with Treasure Map. And there's History of Banalia, making a 2-2 Knight. We'll see if our opponent hits a, a land drop for the turn. They do. So next turn they will have access to Angel of Sanctions, which is a potential card we want to... Metallic Rebuke. After our draw step, we get to look for another artifact. And I don't think there's a point in scrying before we do that. All right, we find Walking Ballista, which isn't bad. So this turn, I think I like playing Servo Schematic and then keeping up Metallic Rebuke. And this sets up this Antiquities nicely. Could have also run out Walking Ballista for one, but then we don't get to counter the Angel. So there's Angel of Sanctions, and we'll counter it. Still get to scry with Treasure Map. End of turn, opponent can hit us for two with the Knight, that's fine. Opponent will have to chum block with their Knights to survive here. Find another Servo Schematic, that's probably a fine one to draw. Could scry again on upkeep, but I don't want to tab the treasure map since I want to attack with it. So Antiquities War happens. Artifacts turn into 5-5s. Five 
And let's see, what else can we do? I guess we can play Walking Ballista for two, kill one of the knights, force the other one to chum block. But I would rather this turn play another Antiquities. So I'll start by attacking with everyone, see what happens. Putin doesn't have any good double blocks either. Double chump, opponent takes 10 down to 10. Alright, so what do we want to do second main? I think playing another Antiquities is fine. Might find a Renegade map that we can still play. Instead of Prophetic Prism, still fine. We'll say go. And then next turn we could definitely run out the Herald of Anguish. And if your opponent spends their turn embalming Angel of Sanctions on the Antiquities, that's fine as well. Would rather have them get rid of the Antiquities than the Herald of Anguish. Opponent does indeed embalm the Angel. I imagine they go after the Saga here. That's fine. Can also use the Herald's ability twice to get rid of the Angel potentially. So do we scry an upkeep? I don't think we do since we might need all our mana here. Alright, another servo schematic. So run out schematic. Run out herald. And then we get to scram with the treasure map still end of turn. And then flip it next turn on our upkeep most likely. Opponent has to discard. Gets rid of a baffling end. That's fine. Would have been an answer to walking ballista. So they might have another answer to the herald here. If we get to untap with the herald we can kill the angel. Ooh, Rishkar's expertise. Opponent gets to draw three cards and then cast something with convert mana cost five or less for free. It's not bad. And indeed another Angel of Sanctions to get rid of our Herald. Fair enough. So we're kind of on empty now. Definitely need to find another payoff card here. One of our Planeswalkers, another Antiquities. Since right now we're not exactly ahead on board anymore. Don't think we want to swamp, untap, scry again on upkeep. And I don't think we want a puzzle knot. Let's see what we draw. Another puzzle knot anyways. I think we wait on the ballista until we can play it for a total of 8 mana to help us kill one of the angels. So this turn I think I'll lead with the prophetic prism, see if we can find something exciting. A renegade map. I think it's probably better to run out the Renegade map, so don't have to sacrifice as many treasures if we want to play Walking Ballista for X equals 4 next turn. No attacks. So we are going to take a bit of a hit from these Angels, but Walking Ballista next turn is going to be pretty good. Merfolk Branch Walker is fine. And they are getting in for 6, trying to close out the game as quickly as possible. We are also representing another Metallic Rebuke, so our opponent might not play their best 5-drop here. Opponent passes, so we'll untap. And I don't mind using the Renegade map before our draw step. We did scry some medium cards to the bottom as well, which is a reason to maybe draw first. Alright, found a Fetid Pools. I think we're just playing Walking Ballista for X equals 4, so a total of 8 mana, so 6. 7, sacrifice a treasure, seems fine. And then we have the option of either killing the one with the Herald or the one with the Antiquities. The one with the Antiquities is definitely more tempting since that one is the token so they can't just embalm it back and would also give us value immediately. I guess we're not forced to sacrifice the Ballista immediately. Don't think our opponent's gonna have any pump spells that they can draw into. Could have also considered attacking with the servos here. So the question is, do we play the fatted pools? I don't think we do. Probably want to cycle it. Baffling ends. Probably targeting the ballista here. And then we'll have to respond by killing the angel of sanctions. Ooh, Blossoming Defense, that's painful. Yeah, that's the card I was afraid of. And our opponent gets to hit us for 8 in the air. So we're not dead yet, but it's not looking good for us here. Alright, we need to top deck something here. Inventor's Fair is a bit too late. Can search up another Walking Ballista, but that's going to be too mana intensive. Find another Servo Schematic, it's not going to do it. 
cycle flooded pools and find a land. All right, we're just dead here. It's unfortunate that uh, Blossoming Defense certainly got us real good. So how do we want to approach this matchup? So Frex's Scripture seems okay. Opponent can, of course, still get it with the Angel of Sanctions before it goes off, but against a green-white creature deck seems like a, a nice addition, even though kind of all our four drops are pretty good. So don't know how many four drops we want to have in the deck. Don't think we need extra copies of Fatal Push. Battle at the Bridge could be interesting, but it does line up pretty poorly against Blossoming Defense. We might be better off without Ephraxia Scriptures if our opponent brings in more Disenchant effects, then it's not going to do a whole lot for us. I think we just uh, run it back. Would like to be on the play. All right, this sounds quite good. Lots of artifacts for the Antiquities. Fatal Push is a nice addition, and we can enable Revolt with our Renegade map. I think for now we just run out the schematic. Adventurous Impulse, find some Petal Grove, which they play, but no other plays at the moment. Some Tab Draw, find a Puzzle Knot. So I think here I prefer Treasure Map plus Scry. Get in for one. All right, another history of Banalia, it's fine. Could also fatal push one of the tokens here to be mana efficient instead of scrying with the treasure map, since next turn we for sure want to play the Antiquities as soon as possible. And in the meantime, we would be taking a bit of damage from the Knight. So I think it's probably fine to use fatal push here. And then just on top, see if we draw land. We don't, so now we're forced to sack the Renegade map. Get a Swamp. And then play Antiquities. Alright, get a Prophetic Prism. Attack for one. Opponent gets another Knight. Thrashing Brontodon can blow up the Antiquities before we get to search up another artifact. Let's see if they go for it, or if they're gonna wait. Don't think we scry an upkeep with the treasure map. All right, get a trigger from Antiquities. Ooh, we missed, that's unfortunate. So now we're in our main phase. Probably wanna run out Prophetic Prism. Finds a land. So now we get to play Renegade Map and a Puzzle Knot. And this will definitely force our opponent to get rid of the Antiquities. Otherwise, they're going to take too much damage next turn. Opponent's still not sacrificing the Brontodon. That's strange. I guess they have another Angel of Sanctions instead. Fair enough. So now they can keep attacking with the Brontodon instead. I think I'm okay jumping the Knight here, since we won't get a ton of opportunities to prevent for life loss here. Then upkeep, we can finally start scrying with the treasure map. Walking Ballista is okay. I guess we keep that on top. Draw. So we could play it right now for two, or next turn by sacking the Renegade map, we can play it for three. I think I would prefer to wait a turn. So let's play a Puzzle Knot for now. And we can also sack a Puzzle Knot using the Prophetic Prism to generate white mana. It's probably fine to still sack the Renegade map here since. Do want to hit our land drops. Hey, shall I? Voice of Plenty. Yeah, that's going to be an issue since now, now we can no longer kill the Angel of Sanctions with the Ballista. So we'll have to kill the Angel instead. Opponent gets in. Probably just chomping with a servo token here to buy some time. And then we'll sacrifice a Puzzle Knot. Untap, scry with Treasure Map. Don't want a schematic. Find a land instead. Alright, definitely in a rough spot here. Fraxian Scriptures would have been okay here, although our opponent does still have the Brontodon. Ixalan's Binding, 
It's gonna get rid of our treasure map. Well, our best draws here include our uh, Herald of Anguish, would uh, put a stop to our opponent's attacks. Opponent's not even attacking us, that's interesting. Let's uh, sacrifice another Puzzle Knot. Find a land, so we can play Ballista for four. I guess we should probably just kill the Shalai right now, before they get to untap. Let's see if they have another Blossoming Defense. They sure do. Alright, pass the turn. Another History of Banalia. Don't really see us getting out of this one unless we can top deck Herald of Anguish right now. We'll triple block a knight. Cycles the desert. Fetid pools, cycle. Prophetic prism, get another redraw. And there's Herald of Anguish, but it might be too late now. Get to play him. Say go. Opponent has to discard. Get rid of a branch walker. But they can just kill our servo token here, attack with everyone, and we take five. Or they can just attack with everyone, that also works. Alright, so we take Xaxes before we get to untap with our Herald. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. And this hand is not great since we only have the two lands. But we do also have a treasure map to help us find lands, and if we do get to four lands for Antiquities, we probably win. I'll keep. So turn one Renegade map, getting a Swamp, probably gonna run out Treasure map on two so we can look for lands right away. Turn one Siren Storm Tamer, so maybe Mono Blue Aggro Flyers deck. Alright, drawing a Swamp here was nice, so we're not forced to sacrifice the Renegade map right away. Might be better to run out Walking Ballista, kill the Siren Storm Tamer right away. And by killing the Storm Tamer now, we play around shenanigans like Dive Down. Another Island. And I don't want my opponent to untap and then play Curious Obsession on their Flyer. Alright, opponent with turn 2, Stormfleet Aerialist, so happy we killed the Storm Tamer there. So let's untap, draw, find a land, perfect. So now we get to Treasure Map, plus Cry. And look for land number 4. And Antiquities should be able to outrace even a turn 3 Tempest Gin here. Yep, there it is. So our opponent with a, a nice curve here, but we were able to disrupt it a little bit by killing the Storm Tamer. So down to 19, and end of turn will scry with the treasure map looking for an untapped land. Instead we find Herald of Anguish. It's an interesting one. It's probably worth keeping here. And then next turn we can go double servo schematic, turn after play a Herald on the cheap. Yeah, it does block all the opponent's flyers. Alright, I'll keep it. So we'll draw, then we'll sacrifice Renegade map, get a Swamp, and then just go double Servo Schematic. We could also go Antiquities, but I think this is probably better. Say go. And then we have these two nice payoff cards. So unless our opponent has an unsummon on the Herald right away, we'll get some value. Favorable Winds is not a bad one. And a second Favorable Winds, wow. Alright, so their Tempest Gin now a 6-6, six, six, so no longer gets uh, blocked by Herald of Anguish. And all of a sudden we're down to 10. So ideally we would want to play Herald and still have a Herald activation up so we can shrink down the Tempest Gin. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, that's gonna work if we don't use a treasure map here. So I'm gonna just take my draw step. Spires of Industry is fine. So let's run out the Heralds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Opponent has to discard to the Herald's ability. What did they discard as their last one? A Nimble Obstructionist, all right. It's pretty good. And now we have Herald sacrificing Servo Schematics, which is also pretty good value. And we can shrink down the Tempest Gin. Warkite Marauder could be annoying next turn, as that will be able to 
make our herald into a zero one. Opponent can't really afford to attack here. They attack anyways. Yeah, we'll block. And then use the ability on the Jin, sacrificing service schematic. So Jin's gonna be a four four and gets eaten alive by the Herald. So I don't think our opponent should have attacked there. So now the Jin dies, get to untap. And do we scry with the treasure map? It's probably fine since we still get double Herald activation up. Antiquities, already have one. Let's bottom, draw fetid pools. So we could attack with the Herald, but instead I'm probably just gonna kill the Warcat Marauder here. And we might as well do it now to play around Nimble Obstructionist. And then we're probably just gonna try and set up a win with the Antiquities while we play defense with the Herald. Opponent has to discard, but they're already empty-handed. And this is a spot where the mono blue deck struggles. Opponent passes, we can transform our treasure map here. Bottom the land. I'm just gonna run out the antiquities here and find a puzzle knot. I'm also just gonna keep up Herald activation just in case. Say go. Opponent has to discard. Discards Curious Obsession, which they couldn't really play. And then in two turns, we'll win with the antiquities. So just have to play defense here. We have double Herald activation up, so nothing should go wrong. Maybe for opponent goes like Tempest Jin into Unsummon. Hmm, Dreamcaller Siren could tap down the Herald unless we kill the Aerialist in response, which is probably fine, although it will cost us quite a few treasures. Uh, it's probably fine to let this resolve. Take three from the Aerialists and save up our treasures. So opponent gets to tap down the Herald, get in for three. I'll take it. So we're down to seven. Antiquities happens, and the fact that we drew Metallic Rebuke is also nice here, as that's gonna prevent any top decks from affecting the game. Antiquities finds a Servo Schematic, I suppose, which we can play. And I guess we'll run out a Puzzle Knot as well. Still have Metallic Rebuke up, plus a bunch of Herald activations, which should be enough here. I guess we can also attack with our servo since the siren can't block. Probably not gonna matter too much. All right, let's say go. And then Herald activations plus Metallic Rebuke should make it so we can't lose here. I guess Unsummon doesn't get countered by Metallic Rebuke, but we can still shrink down their creature so we don't die. And then we definitely win with the Antiquities next turn. Bonan doesn't attack. Let's us untap, and we're just gonna let the trigger resolve here. Turn all artifacts into five fives, and we're just gonna send. All right, that does it. On to sideboarding against mono blue flyers. So, what do we want to bring in in this matchup? Probably just all our removal spells. So, battle at the bridge, fatal push, and that's probably it. Could also bring in Frax and Scriptures, I guess, over some of our Planeswalkers. I guess we can shave one or two Karns, since they're pretty vulnerable to the Flyers. And maybe Antiquities can be too slow. And instead we want the Scriptures. And what we take out... Could see cutting some number of Puzzle Knots or Schematics. Let's uh, shave two of them. I think we keep the Walking Ballista. I can probably just cut a treasure map as well, since might not have a ton of time to activate it. Yeah, this seems fine. All right, we're on the draw, and the sand's great, so we'll keep. No play on turn one, that's good. So, who picked up a scriptures. Think I'm fine running out the renegade map here. And then turn two we can play a puzzle knot, and turn three we can maybe just play a tap land. Turn two warkite marauder. All right. Could also run out the Prophetic Prism, but I think we prefer the Puzzle Knots plus Inventor Sphere so we can start getting life right away. Marauder gets him for two. Let's see if our opponent has a Tempest Gin. Opponent just lets us on tap. 
gain one from Inventor's Fire. I guess I could have the Obstructionist they want to flash in end of turn here, which is fine. So let's draw another Puzzle Knot. Yeah, another Puzzle Knot's probably better given the Herald of Anguish in our hand. So let's see if this resolves. Nope, it gets negated. That's pretty aggressive. All right, so no Nibble Obstructionist end of turn. And let's get in for one with the Servo. So the fact that our opponent didn't have Obstructionists is good since that buys us more time, but on the other hand, given the scriptures in our hand, we would not have minded our opponent running out an extra creature there. So next turn we might be forced to sacrifice a renegade map to find a land, and then we might just run out the antiquities instead, since we won't be able to play the Herald unless we top deck and untap land. Marauder gets in for two. Gain a life and draw a card. Alright, we found the island, so don't mind just running out the Herald here. And they might have a counter, they might not. Opponent has a look as dispersal, fair enough. So Herald gets countered, but we still have more action with the Antiquities in hand, which would have also gotten countered here. Alright, Curious Obsession. So drawing a Fatal Push would be nice here. Alright, gain a life. Opponent's definitely got a very reactive hand, only playing out one creature here. think we're just gonna run out the Antiquities. Hope they don't have another negate. Don't think we want to run out the Scriptures quite yet. Alright, another negate, fair enough. Opponent definitely brought in quite a few counter spells. Negate would not have lined up well against the Herald, but it does line up well against the Antiquities here. So let's pass a turn. And next turn we can sacrifice the map and then go Prophetic Prism plus Scriptures. So our hope is that they just play a bunch of creatures here into the Scriptures. But if they keep hitting us for three, drawing two cards a turn and keeping up counter spells, we could be in trouble. Alright, there's a Tempest Djinn. And opponent passes. Gain a life from Inventor's Fair. And draw another Herald of Anguish. Alright, that's a good one. We can play Prophetic Prism and then still play the Herald. I think what we do is sacrifice Renegade Map first to get a land. Could also run out the Scriptures this turn, which is also tempting. I think it's better to run out the Scriptures here over the Herald since the War Cat Marauder makes it so the Herald can't really block all that well. So let's run out the Scriptures. Hope they don't have another counter spell. All right, resolves. Put a counter on the servo, and then we still get to run out the prophetic prism. I guess if your opponent flashes in an obstructionist and has a favorable winds, we could just be dead here. But not much we can do about that one. All right, opponent did nothing end of turn, so this uh, scriptures might be good to go. They can definitely deal us quite a bit of damage here and draw a card, but at least your opponent won't be able to play anything this turn to add to the board. And then we get to untap and play Herald, which also plays well with the scriptures since your opponent's kind of forced to keep creatures in hand, but then they have to discard them to the Herald. So down to four we go. All right, get to untap, gain a life, and scriptures happens. Opponent loses both creatures, unless they have an obstructionist to counter the trigger, I suppose. Oh well, yep, they did indeed have Obstructionist to counter the trigger from the scriptures. Yeah, it's uh, pretty good here. Not much we can do about it. We can still play Herald of Anguish plus use the activated ability to kill the Marauder, which is probably fine. All right, resolves. Get in for two with the Servo token. And then we want to make sure to kill the Marauder, I think, before our opponent gets to untap in case of dive downs. I guess we can do it on their upkeep. It's probably fine. Opponent also has to discard. Discards another Marauder. We'll let them untap. And then on upkeep, we'll use the Herald's ability to kill the Marauder. And hopefully they don't have another Obstructionist. Alright, Marauder's down. So we are still dead to something like a unsummon on the Herald, but I'm definitely trading for the Tempest Gin if your opponent offers a trade. Deep Freeze instead. 
Yeah, that'll do it. Opponent gets to hit us for 7 in the air with Tempest Gin. And we can't block it with the Herald. So a nice use of the Nibble Obstructionist there to counter the Phyrexian Scriptures, combined with a few counter spells to counter our early threats as well. Alright, so we get to go to a game 3, where I don't think we change anything. Still liked our sideboard plan. Scripture still seems worth it, despite the Obstructionist being able to counter it. Yeah, let's just uh, run back. Would like to be on the play. And this hand certainly keepable. Pretty high on interaction. Don't have any of our real win conditions yet. But being able to interact early is certainly nice. Renegade map or fatted pools. Probably the renegade map. Since if we draw an untapped land, we get to keep a metallic rebuke next turn. Alright, just drew a tap land. Probably worth it to just sacrifice a renegade map for a swamp and then run out the puzzle knot. Ooh, looks like our opponents might have messed up there and skipped through their turn. It's unfortunate. Let's uh, get in for one with the servo. And say go, keeping up Metallic Rebuke over running out Walking Ballista on one. Would rather wait a turn. Warg at Marauder will Rebuke since we have another one. If we didn't have the second Rebuke, I would probably just let it resolve and try to kill it with the Walking Ballista. Since we want to keep Metallic Rebuke for Tempest Gins instead. So we could run out Ballista on two, but then they get to resolve a Tempest Gin potentially. Which I guess we can then kill with the Battle at the Bridge, so that's not the end of the world. Alright, Ballista on two it is. Attack for one. Opponent says go. Alright. It's uh, attack for three, and then just keep up Metallic Rebuke plus Ballista Activation, which also play nicely together. And if our opponents had one of those very reactive hands with a bunch of negates and auto counter spells, then applying pressure here is a good way to get around that. And Deep Freeze on Ballista. Yeah, it's probably annoying enough we should just Metallic Rebuke that. And I think I'll cycle this Fetid Pools to look for more payoff cards. Find another Ballista, that's nice. And a Fatal Push, alright. Let's run out Ballista on two. Attack for three. Keep up Fatal Push. And Ballista plus Fatal Push also combines nicely. In case we need to kill a Tempest Djinn in an emergency. But we still have the Battle at the Bridge as well. Land number four for the opponents. And Favorable Winds resolves. Draw. Ooh, Antiquities is a great draw. Opponent is still keeping up in the gate, so I don't think we'll play the Antiquities here. And instead we can just uh, activate a Ballista. So let's attack first. Could also keep back a Servo to bluff having a Metallic Rebuke, but I don't think that's worth it here. Every point of damage could matter. So pump Ballista. Opponent takes six. And so they're dead next turn if we get to untap, essentially, to our Ballistas. Opponent says go once again. I just want to test our theory to see if our opponent did have a negate. I'm fine if this gets countered. Should still be able to win. Opponent lets it resolve. Find a Puzzle Knot. I'll move to combat. And the Siren can't tap down our creature since they don't have any pirates. Nimble Obstructionist, sure. Could try and kill it here with one of our Ballistas. I think we just let that happen, let them block, since otherwise if we try and kill the Obstructionist and they have a dive down, that would get ugly. So we can shoot the opponent for one. Shoot the opponent for one. Shoot the opponent for one. And then we still have Revolt enabled for Fatal Push to kill the Obstructionist if we really have to. And with one blue mana, at the most opponent can have unsummon on Ballista, but then they still die. And our opponent's dead. Alright, so managed to beat the mono blue flyers, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. And this hand seems okay, we're missing blue mana currently. Which makes this hand a bit sketchy. 
but we already have three lands. Puzzle not into Karn is pretty powerful on the play, so I'll keep. Turn one Evolving Wilds. I guess we'll run out the schematic. Drawing an island next turn would be nice. I guess that's the reason to run out the Inventor's Fair over the Swamp here, since if we draw the islands, we want to be able to go Puzzle Not to keep up Rebuke, and then we miss out on the one life from the Inventor's Fair. Alright, Red Black, but no turn to play. Find a treasure map instead, that's a, a nice one here. Let's get in for one with our Servo. Probably should have attacked before playing the Inventor's Fair, but I'm happy if they spend a removal spell on the Servo here. Run out treasure map. Say go, and then try and find an untapped land for Karn here. And Harness Lightning on the Servo, that's fine. And Gifted Aetherborn, that's okay. Can deal with it with our uh, Tesseret eventually. And yep, we'll keep the Swamp on top. It's not ideal since it's no island, but probably still worth it here. Think I'm just gonna run out Karn and start plussing. Making a token here is fine, but Aetherborn only has two power, so it doesn't really pressure Karn all that well. And let's see what we get here. Alright, give us a Puzzle Knot, got rid of a Ballista. And if we minus to make a token, and let's say they have a removal spell, kill it, attack Karn, I think we're in a worse position. Field of Ruin can kill the Inventor's Fair. Ooh, Contempt instead on the Karn, alright. Still got a little bit of value out of it with the Puzzle Knot. I think we scry on upkeep since we really want to find an island here, or just a land in general. Ballista doesn't do it. Alright, let's run out another schematic. I guess we can run out the Puzzle Knot now. And then uh, next turn we get to flip treasure map which uh, makes those treasures, and those do produce blue mana, so we will have access to Tezzeret. Aetherborn gets in for two. And Field of Ruin on the Inventor's Fire, that's fine. So they helped us fix our mana here. Draw, find a swamp. Let's uh, flip the treasure map. And Islands can probably bottom it now. And then we'll run out Tezzeret. Minus on the Aetherborn, get some value out of it right away. And attack for one with the Servo. And we're still keeping up Metallic Rebuke. Just need to sacrifice one treasure and then we can tap Schematic and Puzzle Knot. Put on Cycles a land. And Contempt will counter. Alright, get to untap. Renegade map, so let's plus. And then I think we draw a card. And run out prism. And then I guess run out a schematic and a renegade map. Attack for one. Sadly, the Ethereum cells aren't actual treasure, so we don't get to sacrifice them with Treasure Cove, but they will still be useful. So the card we're looking for the most here is just uh, Antiquities of War. I don't think our opponent will be set up to beat that card very easily. Chandra Torch of Defiance, yep. Pluses for mana. And Doomfall. Alright, they get to take Schematic or Puzzle Knot. On top, let's draw a card first with our last treasure. And another treasure map is a nice follow-up. Plus Tazeret, run out another schematic, and I'll play the land so we can sacrifice a puzzle not to make an additional servo token here. I guess we can still sacrifice a map and then afterwards scry with a treasure map instead of sacrificing the Cogworkers puzzle knot. Could do both, but then we're giving up an Ethereum cell, which is probably okay at this point have uh, plenty of artifacts already. Glinsleaf Siphoner is fine. Yeah, I think I like sacking the map, getting an island, and then we can sacrifice Puzzle Knots using the Prophetic Prism. 
and then we can still scry with the treasure map, sacrificing an Ethereum cell. And land goes to the bottom. Upkeep, we can scry again. Fatal push on a token, that's fine. Spires on the bottom. And play a Prophetic Prism. Guess we should have tapped the Treasure Cove at this point. Ooh, Herald of Anguish, that's a great one here. Opponent's got exactly one card in hand. I guess another Harness Lightning would do it, so we'll attack our opponent first. Tesseret can probably just minus on the Siphoner, but we'll attack first here. So, all at Chandra. Opponent lets it happen. We'll minus on the Siphoner. And then run out Herald of Anguish. I also could have tapped better here, just tap more artifacts, keep up the activated ability. Probably not gonna matter too much here. Probably would have been better to just sacrifice a servo schematic to kill the Siphoner as opposed to minus Tesseret. But yeah, not gonna matter here. Put on discard another Chandra to the Herald. Alright, on to sideboarding against the red black control. So we could bring in the Ras to kind of take their planeswalkers and Vraska's contempts. That's probably fine. Instead of negate since it's easier to duress them the turn before we play a Planeswalker as opposed to keep up Negate. Uh, Spyglass might also be okay, but I imagine our opponent will have some abrades after sideboard as well, so might not be the most reliable card, but I guess a one-off is fine, and two Fatal Pushes is probably fine to kill the Glint Sleeves, don't want to overboard, since they might just bring in some Phoenixes or Glorybringers to uh, get the job done. And what do we take out? Can probably shave a few schematics here. I guess I'll just go with the one of the rest instead of two. This seems fine. And our hand is okay. We've got some interaction and a good start with a map into Puzzle Knots. We are missing the big uh, finishers, but we'll draw those eventually. And not having them in our opening hand means a duress from the opponent is less uh, annoying. And all right, there's Karn. Turn one Renegade map. Turn to Ether Hub, into Siphoner. All right, so probably want a Fatal Push since they already have the two energy. So Fatal Push right now. Does mean we're shields down on Metallic Rebuke, but so be it. It's mostly the four mana cards from the opponent that are scary, like uh, Chandras and Phoenixes. Instead, another Siphoner. Fair enough. All right, another Fatal Push is an excellent draw. So let's kill Siphoner. And I would definitely just play a land, say go, keep up Metallic Rebuke. Just a tap land from the opponents into Gifted Etherborn. I think we can let that one slide. I'm not too concerned about it. And draw a Swamp. So don't think we want to run out Karn quite yet. So instead we can run out Puzzle Knots. And then still keep up Metallic Rebuke. And Glorybringer is definitely worth the Metallic Rebuke here. Aetherborn gets in for two. And this is where we try and turn the corner. So we can Karn minus, we can Karn plus. I think I like Karn plus here. Let's see what we get. Alright, gives us a land instead of a Herald of Anguish, makes sense. And I'll keep the servo on defense. Alright, opponent just cycling a land. Aetherborn attacks, we'll take it. Untap. So pretty sure opponent will have some sort of removal spell for Herald. Could be Harness Lightning, plus the two energy they already have. But that's probably still fine. I guess we actually can sacrifice Renegade map first for land. Thin out the deck a little bit, get a Swamp, then run out Prophetic Prism, draw a card, then minus Karn, get back Herald, and then play Herald. Let's see if they have the removal spell here. Yep. Nope, opponent cycle Sweltering Suns, alright. So they will be discarding to the Herald. Opponent discards a land. Alright, let's see what they can come up with here. Now they have two problems they have to deal with. 
Can definitely just take two from the Aetherborn on Karn. Alright, Angrath. That's a pretty good one here. They can steal Herald of Anguish to kill our Karn. But that's still not gonna get rid of the Herald of Anguish. So they will deal with Karn. But then Angrath will die to the Herald. So they were able to solve one problem. So we're down to 16. But our opponent's just gonna scoop it up. They can't beat a resolved Herald. Having to discard more cards and then losing the Aetherborn and the Angrath in the same turn. Alright, I want to thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this gameplay. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for supporting the channel. And you can do so yourself as well over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd. Where you get cool rewards for supporting the channel. As well as getting us closer to our goals. Where with every goal reached we will release an additional weekly series. So if you want to see more content, Patreon is the place to go.